Welcome to the San Antonio Spurs Roundtable, powered by Project Spurs. I am your host, Jeff Garcia, and alongside of me is Aaron Prine, also of ProjectSpurs.com. Aaron, the Spurs are streaking. No, not the streaking you did the other night, <laughs> but a 13-game winning streak. Uh, this team looks unstoppable right now, winning, picking up games against Portland, Miami, and, of course, beating everybody else in between. You know, what's been impressive so far during this win streak? Well, one, they've gotten the turnovers down, and their assist numbers have just skyrocketed. They, they, they just finished their third game in a row with 30-plus uh, assists. They're in the, the, they lead the league as far as 30-plus assists a game. I think they're at 14 so far this season. Uh, they've just been incredibly active on the boards. They just, they're showing a lot of energy. Ever since they got back home from the rodeo road trip, they've just been firing on all cylinders. All right. They, I mean, they look unstoppable on both ends of the court. Defensively, they're shutting people down, shutting teams down. I think they're only allowing 92 points a game during this 13-game winning streak. At, and it's definitely and it's pushed them to the top of the league as far as margin of victory uh, and throughout the entire NBA. And when the streak started, they were two games behind Oklahoma City for the top seed in the West and a couple games behind Indiana for the top seed overall. Now they have two games over OKC and two and a half games over Indiana. Right. So uh, the more they keep doing this, the, the more opportunity they're going to have the rest of their players at the end of the season going into the playoffs. You know, one may point to the fact that the Spurs have beaten some power teams during this 13-game winning streak, but I go back to last night's victory against the Warriors. <laughs> I, of, of all the games during this win streak, this one impressed me the most. And I say because they beat a team that more than likely they could face in the postseason, and they beat them without Tim Duncan and Mono Ginobili. And I thought this was the game that there was a snap. The it, third, it goes the back streak. to the defense you were talking about. Uh, uh, Golden State is a team that just loves to shoot from the perimeter with Steph Curry and, and Harrison Barnes and Clay Thompson. They only had 15 attempts from beyond the arc. That's a first half stat for Golden State, not an entire game. And... Uh, it's, and it's also been the bench play of San Antonio. And uh, the role players have been stepping up. They have the best scoring bench in the entire NBA by a, by a huge margin. So they can afford to rest Tim Duncan, Mono Ginobili, and Tony Parker. You know, there's so much to talk about during this 13-game winning streak. A lot of more positives than negatives. Another positive is the play of Tiago Splitter. He's become a lot more aggressive. He has a couple of double-double games recently. And uh, you know, the Spurs are undefeated. When he scores in double digits, I think 22 and 0. What, what does that have to say about Splitter's development? It, it's really more shows with the scoring. It shows more just on a team aspect. Splitter's value really comes in his uh, defensive presence and how he uh, works with Tim Duncan. Uh, they're such a perfect match for each other. And then when they go up against teams like Miami or a team that likes to do a stretch four, then they can also they can bring Boris Diaw in place right. of Thiago Splitter and then bring Thiago to replace Duncan, and they don't miss a beat. So. A lot of people had a lot of gripes about the money that the Spurs gave Tiago in the offseason, but he's earning it. Oh, yeah, he's definitely earning it. But, you know, when a team is 53 and 16, tops in the West and the NBA, you know, pretty much beating everybody in their path right now, are there any concerns right now for you? The only one that's always on the, in the back of Spurs fans' minds is stay healthy, stay healthy. And like I said, if they can just keep going like they, and they have a few more games in March until they hit a really rough patch in April, it's, they're going to have a really tough finish uh, for the season, which is good, what you right. want going into the playoffs. But if they keep winning like they're doing, they can afford the rest at the right. end of the season. Y you know, you're, you're talking about the whole health aspect. That's huge for this team, especially with the core being as old as they are. But for me, I have concerns that they may be peaking too soon. Is this, I mean, should they, 13 game winning streak, you think there's a chance that they may just be peaking a little bit too soon and should be hitting this stride maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of games, you know, before? Well, they haven't been the perfect post. throughout the entire streak. They had the, the second game against uh, Los Angeles where they were really struggling against the worst team in the West. And right. it's, well, it's, it's, just, it's, it, and it's giving Popovich plenty of uh, am ammunition to uh, uh, get on his team about. And this isn't. Uh, this isn't your regular NBA team where they just peak and then they just fall off the, but, the but face we, of the earth. But we've seen this before in seasons past. Spurs look phenomenal in the regular season. Winning streak, 13-game winning streak, double-digit winning streak last go, year. You can go they, back they, and they, point they, out yeah. in something like injuries, like uh, the first round loss to Memphis, Duncan's in, injury, ankle injury a couple of weeks before the end of the season, and, of course, Manu breaking his arm. You know, you have to have, a lot of, you have, to have good, uh, good talent to get into the playoffs, but you also have to have a lot of luck in order to get to the finals and win the finals. And, and also health is a big thing. Just like with the Spurs um, uh, series against Miami last season, they were clearly the better team than Miami. But when you have Parker go down to a hamstring issue and he's the top player on the floor, but he's no longer the top player on the floor, it changes the balance. Should TP get, it, get more rest right now? He will. 
He, he will eventually, but it's too soon to start really resting your players because you do want to have that um, – that uh, flow going well, into the season, and, that, and not, that chemistry. And, and not to mention, they have a, a pretty adequate, decent backup point guard right now in Patty Mills, who looks like he could just insert him in the starting lineup, and the team will still motor on. Yeah, and it, it's not just Patty Mills. It's, it's, it's that entire bench, and they, that's going to allow them to really ha uh, hammer out or uh, go through that tough ap April where they're going to have some... Uh, they have th a couple more back-to-back -back sets. And yeah, well, what, have what, home and I think they have what the we pretty much dubbed here as the, the pretty much the week that we don't want. You know, the hell week. The hell week. Yeah, yes. they, uh, what, they're going to have. Got? Uh, well, I couldn't get, tell you who they got exactly, but they're going to have five games in seven days. It's going to think. I believe it's going to start off with uh, Denver. But they got some pretty tough teams in there. Right, and then the middle of it's going to be on the road against Indiana, and then they're going to come back home against. Uh, Gold, or maybe Dallas, and, but mm -hmm. the, the very next day they're going to have to go back up to o OKC. So they're going to have uh, two road games, one of them part of a back-to-back -back against the best team in the East and then the second best team in the West. You, you, know, you mentioned about some of the teams that they're going to be facing during this hell week. Uh, you know, these, some of these teams they may see in the postseason. And as we stand right now, the Spurs currently have Memphis mm -hmm. in the first round. Are you worried about Memphis? There's no one. There's no possible first-round matchup for the Spurs that I'm worried about. If they were to face Memphis, it would be a, a, what we would call a gentleman. Hold that four thought. You got Memphis, Phoenix, and Dallas. All right. those three. Hang on. All those three could fall at eight. Right. Of the three, Memphis should scare you the most. I would say Phoenix, but uh, no. <laughs> I, I don't. I disagree. But go. Uh, Memphis's defense has picked it up, but. Uh, they're just not capable of really handling the, the Spurs offense the way they're going. And then also the way the Spurs defense is playing. Memphis just, just does not have an offense. And, so, when Phoenix, and like Phoenix has some defense? No, but they have a, a faster I mean, uh, offense that does give the Spurs a little bit more fits, just like we saw the other night against L.A. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the teams that can move the ball faster and can kind of play at the same pace that the Spurs want to play with. Those are the more threatening teams. The teams that grind it down. This is not the Spurs of old. This is not the 2010-2011 team that that uh, we would say there's a terrible matchup for Memf against Hist Memphis. Historically, though, Memphis does have just fare well against the Spurs in the postseason. Uh, Phoenix doesn't. Historically, Memphis is players such as Mike Conley, who just loves to see silver and black, and he just goes off for double digit scoring. Same thing with uh, Gasol and Zach Randolph. Last year's Memphis team was better than. Uh, this, this year's, and the Spurs disposed of them in four, sh four straight games. I am not worried about this year's Memphis team. But, of course, you probably are worried about Dallas if they were slipped to eight, right? I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> sure everybody in San Antonio is trembling at the sight of Dewan Blair taking his revenge on the Spurs, right? If that even goes to six games, I'll be, I'll be uh, really shocked. That's well, definitely a Spurs 4-1. So, so well, okay, okay, well, let's talk about the playoffs before we put a wrap on this, though. Do the Spurs have to have the number one seed if they slip to two? Is that pretty much earth shattering for them? The Spurs right now are 27 and 8 on the road. They're the only team in the NBA with less than uh, double digit losses uh, for as far as on the road. Uh, franchise record is, tw is 29 and 12. Uh, here's an interesting little stat. Uh, since 1986, any team that's had 30 plus road wins has gone on, is 5 and 0 in the NBA Finals. 5 and 2 in Conference Finals, and those two losses are against other teams that have 30 plus wins on the road. The Spurs don't need, they would like it, they're never going to turn it down. But it's always going to be about health and rest, and that's right. what Pop puts above everything else. Right now, I just see having, if their Spurs are go all the way to the NBA Finals, they've got to have that home court advantage. It would yeah. definitely be preferable. If they're going to face a Miami or Indiana or anybody else out of the East, they've got to have that home court advantage, if it goes seven. But right now, their home and road record is identical. I think, actually, they have one more win on the road, thanks to last night's win against Golden State. But... They're the best team on the road, so it's not that uh, you know, it doesn't worry that well, much. Well, not to mention too, if they do secure the first seed, they have technically the easier path to right. the finals. It, and it would be very nice if uh, right now I think Houston's on the same side of the bracket as San Antonio, but it would be nice if Houston ended up on the side where OKC is because that is a bad matchup for OKC. Right. I still think even with all the struggles with Westbrook and OKC is, OKC is going through. There's still not a favorable matchup against San Antonio. All right. Well, those are our thoughts right there on the Spurs' current 13-game winning streak. And, of course, a little preview of the upcoming playoffs where the Spurs sit at number one and will be drawing Memphis, as at least right now. You know, we're running out of time here, but we almost, we're going to get Bob on to talk about how he misses Nando DiColo <laughs> so much. And, he, you know, he was weeping when news broke. Sorry. Sorry about that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted more playing time. Yeah, he wanted more playing time. But uh, for Aaron Prine, I'm Jeff Garcia. Thanks again for watching the Project Spurs Spurs Roundtable.
You miss Nando?